Hi friends, I'm Miss Deanna. I know many of you may know me from church. Um, I may have been your teacher. So I'm so excited today I get to read a book to you today. Um, it's Sophie and the Heidelberg Cat. First, we're going to um, have a little time of prayer. We'll pray and then we can start reading. So Lord, I just pray that you just bless this time that I have to read the book to the kids. I pray that those children at home and watching this, wherever they're at, Lord, will be blessed. That it'll be a fun time that they have as they're home, dealing with all this new situation and the new normal that we have to deal with, Lord. And I thank you that I have this opportunity to come to read to them, um, that they'll be able to um, hear the story um, through our Facebook page. Um, I just pray your blessing upon all the families um, that are watching. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. All right, so let's get started. Um, Sophie and the Heidelberg Cat by Andrew Wilson. <clears throat> Sophie's crying. Her sister Michaela has broken her dollhouse and nobody cares. To make matters worse, she pushed over her sister, then yelled at her parents and stormed up the stairs. She looks out the window and sees on the chimney the cat from the Heidelberg house next door. She stares at it. When to her utter amazement, it suddenly asks her, you're crying, what for? Here's the cat. Well, Sophie is very surprised, but she knows that you cannot tell lies to a talking cat. Michaela just broke my new dollhouse, she says. So I gave her a shove and I knocked her down flat. Then I screamed at my parents and ran to my room. And now I feel guilty for doing all that. In fact, I feel worse about that than the dollhouse. What do you mean, asked the Heidelberg cat? Hmm, she feels worse about treating others like that. Let's see what's gonna happen. Well, Sophie whispers, I've upset Michaela. I've upset my mom. I've upset my dad. And worst of all, I even upset God. And the Bible says that means I'm really bad. The cat puts his paws on the windowsill, grins and says, Sophie, let's go for a rooftop walk. Quick as a flash, Sophie climbs out the window. She knows you say yes to a cat that can talk. Scrambling up tiles and walking down roofs, they peer into houses and gardens and chat. The birds in the skies raise their eyes in surprise as a girl on the roof with a talking cat. I don't know, I haven't talked to many cats lately, have you guys? Hmm, I would say it would be quite interesting. Right, says the cat, you just mentioned the Bible, so what do you think it's trying to say? Easy, says Sophie. It's trying to tell us how we can please God and be kind and obey. I hope all you friends are kind and obey to your parents. Be bold like King David and be brave like Queen Esther and do what God tells you no matter how scary. Don't fight him like Pharaoh or trick him like Judas. Be patient like Paul and respectful like Mary. The cat looks at Sophie and, are you, it asks. Not really, says Sophie. I mean, at least not for long. That's why I was crying before. It's so hard to be good all the time and it always goes wrong. I understand that, huh? Aha, says the cat. Let me tell you a secret. There's no one who can, not your mom or your dad, your friends or your neighbors, and even your teacher. When no one can see, it's surprisingly bad. <laughs> Look around the street. Miss Gubbins is rude. The Macintosh children are always in fights. The pastor gets angry. The shopkeepers are proud. And the Joneses have horrible quarrels at night. Mm. See? Not anyone is perfect. Sophie looks puzzled. 
That's awful, she says. What hope is there if things are really like that? She sits on a chimney and stares at the sky. I am so glad you asked, says the Heidelberg cat. The Bible tells stories of hundreds of people and all of them disobey God, except for one. So hope doesn't come from the good things we do. It comes as a gift from what Jesus has done. Hope you guys all know what Jesus has done for you. Let's see. You've trusted in him. So he's paid for your sins and thrown them all into the depths of the sea. By rising again, it has broken the power of death and the devil and let you go free. He watches your life. He makes all things work out. He helps you make choices. He tells you what's true. He promises you will live forever with him. And that's why the hope comes from him and not from you. Mm -hmm. Sophie sits still to make sure the cat's finished. She has enough questions to talk for a week. But she knows very well, as I'm sure you do too, that you always leave time for a cat that can speak. I'd better go home, Sophie finally says, and tell them I'm sorry, but thanks for the talk. I'm so looking forward to telling my friends that I spoke to a cat and we went for a walk. The other thing you should know, says the cat, as it silently crosses the tiles on all fours, the best and most comforting news in the world is that I am not mine and you are not yours. Sophie is shocked. What on earth do you mean? Well, look at the tag on my neck, says the cat. It tells you my name, then it tells you my owners. The Heidelbergs bought me. I'm theirs, and that's that. Who do you think bought us? The same goes for you. You've been rescued by Jesus. That's right, Jesus has rescued us. So he is your master from now till you die. He will love you, protect you, and never neglect you. But you're not your own, Sophie, neither am I. At last they arrive right outside Sophie's window. She clambers back in with her hand on the slat. When will I see you again? Sophie asks. I'm not sure you will, says the Heidelberg cat. But to help you remember our first conversation, I will give you my tag with my name, just in case. With that, it goes back to the Heidelberg's chimney. Sophie looks down at the tag and it says, Grace. And there goes the kitty, back to her chimney. So, friends, I hope that you really enjoyed that book. Um, the most important thing is the grace. And I know sometimes it's so hard to have lots of grace right now because we are cooped up at home and we can't really go out and leave and we are stuck with our friend, family, our brothers, sisters, and just remember that we need to have grace. We need to be patient and loving and kind to all of those in our family right now. So I will just continue to pray that for all of you guys. And another important thing that we read about was how Jesus is the one who rescued us. So in here, it talks a little bit about the application and it asks the question, what is your only comfort in life and in death? And the answer they put is uh, that I am not my own, but belong body and soul in life and in death to my faithful savior, Jesus Christ. He has fully paid for all my sins with his precious blood and has set me free from the tyranny of the devil. He also watches over me in such a way that not a hair can fall from my head without the will of my Father in heaven. Can you believe that? He, God even knows exactly how many hairs are on your head, how many are going to fall from your head. He knows everything. All things must work together for my salvation. Because I belong to him, Christ, by his Holy Spirit, assures me of eternal life and makes me wholeheartedly willing and ready from now on to live for him. 
So let's not forget that Jesus loves us so much that he died on the cross for us. And that he rose again and he is your savior. So thank you, friends. I miss you. I hope to see you very soon. I can't wait to see your smiles and get your hugs. And thank you for spending this time with me. God bless you.